block coding with the DroneBlocks app. Now that you've seen the DroneBlocks app and you know a little bit about our stage when our code palette and the status bar, we're gonna actually make our drones fly. I know that's what you've been waiting for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm about to, let's get this app running. I'm about to drag a takeoff and land block onto the stage. So let's just do that quickly. Take off, land, okay. Now I've got takeoff and land. I'm going to use a navigation block that deals with the navigation of the drone. In this case, I want the drone to just fly forward 60 inches. Not a big deal, let's do that. So I'm gonna drag the navigation block onto the stage, there's fly forward, and then I'm just gonna tap on the 20, and I'm gonna change this value to 60, and I'm gonna press okay. Now it says fly forward 60, but hang on a second. What I'm gonna do, on the bottom right, I'm just gonna tap in the, the zoom button, which is the plus sign, and get a nice bigger view of the screen, that's better. Okay, so now that you can see these blocks better behind me, what we need to do is just have a quick look. If you look really close at the takeoff block, you'll see that it has a little piece. And if you look at the very top of the fly forward piece, it looks like it's a slot. So those two together, well, like any good concept, we'll just click. So I'm gonna drag on fly forward up and watch it just click into place. Click and land, click, amazing. There we have fully working code. Now it's very important to stress that if your blocks do not click or connect, the code will not run properly. Okay, so this is good, this is bad. Now you know, good, bad, cool. Okay, so now that our drone has taken off and flown forward, let's actually launch the mission. As you've seen in a previous video, we need to get out of the drone blocks app, go to settings and connect to the Tello. Now, of course, the most important part, battery in, turned on, flashing orange, check. Now, let's check for the network. So I'm on the internet now, I'm gonna go to see all and Click, 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 click. There's Tello, E, F, E, tap, connecting, amazing. Okay, now I'm gonna switch back to the DroneBlocks app. And you'll notice it says Tello, E, F, E, 336, has no internet access. You've clear, we've cleared that up in the previous video that you have no internet while you're connected to the Tello. Okay, now DroneBlocks will warn you and it will tell you you have to follow those steps. We've done that, so we just have to tap, connect to Tello. And if we are lucky, Bang, there we have a nice camera view of some grass. So now we wanna click on the menu and click on launch. But before we do that, I just wanna show you something really quickly. On our three blocks, take off, fly forward and land, what's gonna happen is as soon as I launch my mission, we're gonna get an abort button down below that'll let us abort the mission. But the code itself, you're gonna notice that the block that is currently running will highlight. Okay, so when I launch this mission, take off will highlight while the drone takes off then fly forward 60 inches will highlight when the drone flies forward, and then when it lands, well, the land block will highlight. Let's see that in action. So launch mission, go and watch the camera. Oh, there you go, but give a loose connection, but it's connecting and it's taken off. And now we're about to fly forward 60 inches, amazing, and we land. Now what's really cool is you might notice is the camera tilted down when we started to fly forward. Now remember, that's because we adjust the pitch to move forward. See how it all comes together? That's so cool. Okay, so now that we've flown forward 60 inches, let's take our skills to the next level and fly in a square. So what I need to do is I need to go to the navigation, go to fly right, drag that onto stage, tap on the 20, change that to 60, press okay, drag it under fly forward, let it click, navigation, fly backward, tap 20, change to 60. And now I press okay, and I'm gonna drag this just under fly right, clicks in place, navigation, fly left, drag that just under, I'll tap on 20 and go 60, 60, press okay. And then I'm going to drag this just under there, done. Cool, now let's go hamburger, launch mission, and let's see this in action. Go square, go. Okay, so takeoff is highlighted. Now, another very cool thing besides our blocks highlighting, I'm gonna tap the camera down here. Now I get a full screen view of the camera. How cool is that? Now I'm gonna tap on the canvas button to return back to the canvas. And now we're back, just in time to land. Okay, now let's see that again, but from another view. So launch mission, drone takes off. There you can see the actual view of the drone as it takes off, it flies forward, flies right, flies backwards and flies left. Look how clean and smooth that motion is. And it lands, amazing. 
Well, now that we've flown in this amazing square, we need to do something quite cool. We need to save this mission so that we can open it on another device. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to save this code real quickly. So here we have our code. Now I've disconnected from the drone so the camera is no longer there. I've got my code, just in case you're wondering where the camera's gone. I want to save this because I'm on my little tablet. I want to take this to my Chromebook in the classroom. So I tap on the menu item. So you see how it says log in. I'm going to tap log in. And now because this is an Android device, it'll pre-log in with my Google account that I used to install the app, which is fine. And now it says drone blocks menu. If I go down to missions, I can hit save mission. It says enter title. This is going to be a 60. How about I type this properly? This is going to be a 60 inch square. Now the reason I put the measurements is because, well, this is a 60 inch square. So I hit save and your mission has been saved. Now I'm going to pull out my Chromebook. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on the hamburgers and say log in. And it's going to log me in because it's an Android device. Now I can click on the hamburger again and go to my mission. Look at that. If I click on my mission, here is 60 inch square. If I click on the edit button, all of a sudden there is my code. Now what's really cool is I can make some modifications. Like I can make this an 80 inch square. Actually what I might do, let me keep it at 60. But I want to now save this again. I can just click on the menu, go to missions and hit save, and it saves the mission. Now, what's really cool about that is if I click on the hamburger icon and go to my missions. So instead of just editing on the stage, I can actually click on this button here. Nice little view on the other screen. This is the share mission button. If I click on share mission, I now get to copy these links and send them, to, send them to other students or other teachers. They can then take these links and edit the code on their computer. What's even cooler is then they can save that code into their drone block saved missions. That is so cool. Now there are two different types, right? We have the iPad shared link. Now it says iPad shared link, but it's actually a device shared link. So if I copy this link, it'll open up on an Android or an iPhone because you'll notice closely it says, See how it says drone blocks colon slash slash? That's telling your device to open it in the drone blocks app. Now, if you don't have that option, the desktop share link, if you copy and paste this, this will open up in any browser. Yes, you can do block coding in a browser. The reason why we don't start with the web browser version is because you cannot execute your code or launch your mission from the web browser. There is a limitation about executing code from a web browser to the Tello drone. But what you can do is you can still edit your code, save it into your account, make the modifications, then the students can log into their device on their tablets or their other Chromebooks, and then they can launch the code. Okay, so just so you're aware, if you do the desktop share, great for accessibility because anyone can edit the code without needing the DroneBlocks app installed, but you cannot launch the code. So for your lesson, you would use one of your certified devices. Now that you've used drone blocks and block coding to fly in a square and send that code to your Tello drone, we're gonna go to the next video, which covers using your block coding in the drone blocks app, but in one of our three simulators. The simulator is so cool and I can't wait to show you. Now the best part about the simulator is that you don't need a Tello drone. So grab your device that you teach with and meet me in the next video.